Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. In today's video, I'm setting up my husband's bullet journal for September with a watermelon party theme. So Watermelon Party is a children's book written by my husband's cousin, Jasmine. She was inspired by a series of photographs posted by the founder of Rocky Ridge Refuge, showing many of their rescues of various species coming together to share the wonderful treat that is a watermelon. <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all noticed, but I also talked about my love of watermelons in my last video, and I'm just feeling like this is a sign that I need more watermelon in my life. <laughs> Leave a watermelon emoji in the comments if you agree. But anyways, Jasmine felt that this would make a great children's book with its message of diversity, inclusion, and friendship, and that it would be a really good opportunity to raise funds for the refuge. Rocky Ridge Refuge is an animal sanctuary located in Arkansas and is home to animals of all kinds. Run by Janice Wolf, they take in the toughest cases even when it seems like all hope has been lost. Not only does Rocky Ridge Refuge take in cats and dogs in need of care and safety, but they also provide sanctuary for exotic animals who are usually turned away at shelters due to unsuitable facilities. Cheesecake the Capybara, Crouton the Tortoise, Squatch the Wallaby, and Barco the Zebra are just a few. The beautiful thing about these animals is that they all get along harmoniously despite their differences, which is such an important message to pass on to the next generation. As a huge animal lover myself, it really warms my heart to see these animals getting the care and love that they need. Jasmine has been able to donate thousands of dollars from book sales to Rocky Ridge Refuge since the book's release in 2014. She even started her own publishing company, Green Bamboo Publishing, to make this dream a reality. So check out the links in the description to learn more about all of the good being done by Rocky Ridge Refuge, as well as to see more of Jasmine's books. She's currently producing her second children's book, High Paw Super Sebastian, which is about a foster puppy and is designed to raise awareness about foster care as well as to help children process their emotions. So I'm starting by working on the cover page, which I kind of wanted to just be a giant abstract watermelon. So I'm starting by mixing together some gouache paints. All supplies are linked in the description box as always. And I'm creating this pink shade and bringing it down to about three quarters of the way down the page. And then leaving just a bit of a gap in between, I'm painting green at the bottom. and then using white gouache to sort of blend the edges. I'm giving this paint a long time to dry and jumping over to the next page, which is going to be the monthly calendar. I've been really into one page calendars lately, both for myself and for my husband, and so far he's really been liking them. So I'm sticking with that this time. I thought it would be kind of fun to make the headers along the top, so the days of the week, to make the letters themselves look like watermelons. So I'm painting the general shape of the letters again about three quarters of the way down with the pink, leaving a little gap, and then the bottom with green, and then using some white to sort of try to blend a little bit between. I also had a little bit of a messy edge of the painting. I didn't bring the paint all the way to the center of the page because the pages in this Ding Bats notebook are actually all removable. They're all perforated. And I didn't want the paint to seep through those holes in the perforation through to other pages in the notebook. So I used washi tape to stop before the perforation. But as you can see, when I removed the washi tape, there was a little bit of paint that seeped through. So I decided to add a nice thick black line to the edge just to clean it up and I actually really like the look of the very bold black line so I decided to use that same sort of bold line to outline the calendar. I was initially planning on doing something a little thinner. Once the paint has had time to dry I'm going in with my black pen to do an outline of the letters just to make them look a little cleaner, stand out a little bit more, and also adding the little seeds. Just kind of randomly spread out and facing different directions. Then I went in and added the September header on the cover page. I decided to go with my standard cursive. This is my natural cursive handwriting. So just a nice, simple, bold monoline lettering. Once everything had enough time to dry, I'm going on to the next two pages, 
which are going to be the last two pages of this setup. As y'all know, I keep my husband's setups really quick and simple, just a few little spreads. I'm actually adding one extra spread that I normally don't do. I don't remember the last time that I did a sort of quote page or an additional sort of art page. I have done them in the past for him, but it's been a while, but he's actually away right now. And September is our anniversary month. We started dating in September and we also got married in September. So I thought it might be fun to do a little page, a little surprise for him for when he comes home and to make this month feel special since it is our anniversary coming up. So I thought it'd be really cute to do a page that says you're one in a melon because that's just the kind of joke that I like, you know, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> So I thought it'd be fun here to mix up the lettering using both my watermelon letters that are more bold and my cursive lettering to kind of tie everything together in one spread. So I laid everything out in pencil. I created the letters for one and melon the exact same way as the letters from the monthly calendar. And I also painted a nice slice of watermelon below the lettering. And now moving on to the last spread of this setup, which is the first page of the notes pages. If you've never seen one of these setups in my husband's bullet journal before, I'll quickly explain how he uses his bullet journal. So he typically uses a monthly calendar for all of his scheduling. And then he likes to just have blank pages, as many as he needs to write down notes, to write down tasks, reminders, whatever he needs. And he basically uses those notes pages as a daily log. He just uses as many pages Pages as he needs, whenever he needs them, draws diagrams when he needs them, etc, etc. And then wherever he got to when we're ready for the next month, I just flip the page to the next page and start for the next month. So I like to create a page as the first page of his notes and then he uses as many as he needs after that. So a theme throughout Watermelon Party the book is that the pages have some repetition to help kids learn these action words. So there's this repetition of threes throughout the book. So I thought it'd be fun to have the header of the notes page repeat notes three times because that really does tie into the rhythm of this book. And then at the bottom, I wanted to do my best to paint a little homage to the art style of the book, which was wonderfully illustrated by John Moriarty. And to be honest, I was really nervous about this because I don't really paint a lot in this style or paint a lot of animals. And I wasn't really sure how it would turn out, but I thought I would pick a couple animals and do my best to paint them in a similar style. So I decided to choose Cheesecake the Capybara, Crouton the Tortoise, Gecko the Cat, and Fiesta the Fawn to paint. And I just did my best to sort of match the colors and the style from the book. And it was actually a really fun little challenge to try to paint them. I definitely think there are things here and there that I would improve upon if I were to paint them again. But really that's why I enjoy creating art in my bullet journal and in my husband's bullet journal so much is that I'm completely self-taught. I enjoyed painting and drawing as a kid, but I never really took it that seriously. And in coming back to it as an adult, it's so good for me to find something that is full of experimentation and learning and failure and growth and just that childlike fun and play that comes with creating art and trying things. And, you know, if something doesn't work out, you learn from that and try something different next time and you build upon those skills and you create things that you never would have thought of just a couple months ago. That whole process has been really good for me as a um, attempting to recover intense perfectionist who was very afraid of failure. So anyway, what I'm saying is go for it. I get a lot of comments from people saying that they feel like they can't be artistic in their bullet journal because they don't feel like they're good enough. And if you don't want to be artistic, you don't have to, of course, but if you want to and you're holding yourself back because of fear, then I really encourage you to try to let go of that a little bit. Try to dive in. If you look back at my older bullet journals, you can see such a clear growth over time of my skills and I still have so far to go, but it can be really liberating to take that step forward and just go for it and release all of your expectations of yourself because there's no way for you to be an expert at something without taking the time to do it and to work on it. And maybe you'll never be an expert at something and that's okay too. You don't have to be the best at everything you try for it to be worthwhile. 
So that little pep talk aside, I really enjoyed setting up these spreads. I'm excited to share them with my husband when he gets home. I'm really excited to be bringing more awareness to what Jasmine is doing and what Rocky Ridge Refuge are doing. So I really hope that you take the time to check them out and I hope you enjoy this fun setup. And with that, I think we've reached the end of this video. So before I go, I do want to take a second to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Jasmine, Andrea, Combat d'une Warrior Syndrome de Fatigue Chronique, Diana, Jennifer, Ashley, Jessica, Tracy, Moon Moon, Fremder, Amy, Kayla, Shauna, Anna, Heidi, Stevie, Tasneem, Jennifer, Mary, Paula, Veronica, Avery, Cindy, and Saskia. Welcome all of you to the squad. It is so cool to see so many new people coming to hang out with us. It is always a good time, especially in our private Discord server. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.